So at this point, we've got this project so far. We've got these different screens that are popping open. We were on our way to continue to populate this section, PC 101. And we saw that if you click, then that opens up. And then, of course, we'll add some content there as time goes on. But this is enough to have a good skeleton to now make the other ones work. Because this has a header, it has the back button, it has the content, the article. So what we'll do is a little copy and paste and then edit some of that copied and pasted stuff. I want PC201 to be clickable and that'll be, a, that'll be intermediate PC classes. So if we go back to our code here at the bottom, we've got a section and the comment which shows these are our basic PC classes and here we'll have content. But we can copy this whole chunk. We can copy the comment all the way down to the end of the section. So select the, the comment and then down to section. Copy that. And then paste it after that section. So that now you've got an exact copy and then we'll just go in and edit some of these things. Line 263 now, instead of it saying basic PC classes, this is intermediate. PC classes. And this needs an ID. If we keep the same ID, that's a problem. Then the button won't know which screen to go to. Int PC. Visually for people, there's the H1. Basic PC classes? No, intermediate PC classes. So previously on the on the links higher up, we had href equals pound basic PC, and then href equals pound int PC, and then now we've actually created the sections. So if I save and run this, now PC201 has an intermediate PC classes screen. PC 101, basic PC classes. At this point it would also be a good idea, well, I perhaps would also want inter, uh, advanced PC classes at some point. Uh, so I'm going to make a, a section for advanced. Now here's something that you might not know, and this is not related to uh, notepad or anything like that. It's just, this is a basic Windows thing that I notice people don't quite realize. I've copied the basic section and I pasted it. It's still in memory. I have not uh, copied anything else to replace it. I still have a copy of the basic PC skeleton. So I'm going to go in and after this section of intermediate paste, because I still had the basic in memory. That's how that works. When you copy something, it stays in memory until you copy something else to replace. So um, again, that's just basic built into to Windows and, and Mac OS also. It still remembers your last copy until you copy something else or turn off the power. But the point is that you could go back and select and copy and then again paste. But we've already have it in memory. So change that to 72 to advanced. PC classes. Change the ID to ADV, advanced PC class. You can spell it out if you want. ADV, advanced PC classes. And then visually I want to show on screen advanced PC classes. We don't have, however, a link to get to this screen, do we? The screen and the content exists, but we don't have a link to it. We'll deal with that in a moment. But now we've got the skeleton for these three main pages. Basic PC classes, advanced PC classes, and uh, intermediate PC classes. So this again harkens back to the uh, earlier part of the course last week, where we started to see that using jQuery Mobile, we can create an SPA. What does SPA stand for again? single page app. 
all of the screens, all of the sections of the project exist in this one file. And so far, in my case, well, I'm up to 291 just because I've got empty spaces, but 282 lines so far encompass my project, which will still add to it. But uh, we saw, I mentioned the, the, the good and the bad of an SPA. One of the bad is that, well, your, your, your code is going to get pretty long. Your, your main HTML core content is going to get long, because that's going to include every screen, every dialog box, everything. We're going to have the CSS in a separate file, and the JavaScript in a separate file. Technically, we could have also had the CSS and JavaScript in this file. We made it even longer, but I think that would be too cumbersome. The big positive of having it all in one file is basic things like the, uh, the data add back button. That works. If that were in a separate file, if we had advanced pc.html, the data add back button would probably not work because we would break the flow in, in behind the scenes. This is all using something called Ajax. You don't have to quite worry about that yet, but basically we'd break the flow of the app by going from one file to another. And simply data add back button wouldn't work anymore. We'd have to use another method. The data transitions wouldn't work anymore either. Going from file to file, that wouldn't animate. So those basic things that really help user interface, user experience, are one of the reasons why we want to keep it as an SPA. And I think the trade-off of a larger file is OK. Again, I'm getting used to using Control find to navigate my document. So yeah, it could be 500 lines, 1,000 lines, and with some find, I should be able to get around. So now I've got an advanced section that there's no way to get to. This is the opposite of a dead end. right? A dead end is I'm going somewhere and I can't get to this, but now I'm somewhere and I can't get back. Does a dead end have an opposite name? But anyway, we need uh, a link, so we need to back up to where those links are at. Uh, I'm going to do find and uh, the general area will be PC201. You could match case if you'd like. It's not really going to matter. I know that I've really only got one place that has that, so find it. And that takes us back to the section 2.24. The unordered list ends. Intermediate class 201. We need a new divider. What's that? Well, I, in my case, I ran the words together, PC201. You might have had... Yeah, that's true. If you search for 201, it would find 2015. You're right. So again, computers are dumb. They only do exactly what we tell them. Um, we need a new divider. We've got the beginner divider, the intermediate divider. We need an advanced divider. So based on what exists, we're going to need a new list item, data role, list dash divider, role, heading, intermediate. So after the list item of PC201, we'll add a new list item. Both the divider and the actual button inside of it are both list items but then one is elevated to another role, we'll have that new list item have a data role. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. The angle bracket is on the end of the mapper tag. You put the A and then the A column. What is that bracket for? It's on the hill that slide at the end. Yes. This angle bracket here? Yes. It goes with, it goes with the A tag right here. And then the A, and there's another A, so there's two, uh, okay, yes. Another A that closes? Yeah. Okay. A tag that starts the tag, uh, the link, and then slash A that closes the link. Okay. So data role. Now it's happened to a couple of people so far, and it's very easy to do. Remember, these are data roles. It's very easy to misspell role as an R-O-L-L. -L. 
or even date roll. I've seen that a couple of times, D-A-T-E. So uh, just with practice, we'll be seeing that these will become second nature. But this is going to have a data role of list-divider, as well as a role of heading. And even if I didn't know this, even if I didn't read jQuery Mobile screen by screen, I could figure this out based on the code that already exists, the code that we got from Codica. Advanced. So we've got a new divider for advanced classes. Then we'll need another bullet point. Another list item. And the way that's working is with an A tag, just like the other uh, item. So that needs href, we call it ADVPC, data transition, slide. You can say PC301. So uh, half an hour ago, or, or however long it was, we had links, but we didn't have a target page. So we had to create the page, the section. Just a moment ago, we created the section, the advanced PC, and we didn't have a target link. So now we're coming back to make the target link. So this should be enough. Go ahead and save it and run it and um, see if that works. Oh, nope. No one mentioned it. No one mentioned it, but pound sign. Pound ADV PC. And now it should work. And so there are subtle things to, to mix up, of course, unfortunately. Sometimes something is heading, sometimes it's header. Which is which, you just have to get practice to write the right one at the right time. Let's see if that works. Some weird space there that I have to deal with. And then PC301, advanced PC classes. Did anyone else get also an empty space here? I have some weird empty space right after PC201. What's that? Oh, which one? Oh, there it is. Oh, good eye there. So it worked, uh, but technically it's wrong, isn't it? I opened the list tag, but I didn't close it. So if you were following exactly what I was doing diligently, I led you astray. Line 226, I didn't close that list tag right there.
actually. So we've got PC 101, 102, 201, 301. Uh, as I said earlier, I only want one item within the particular section to be clickable. This one still looks like it is right here. So I want to actually remove completely um, this A tag. So on line 215 and 217, uh, I want to remove the... It wasn't good enough to remove the href. I did, now I do want to remove the, the A tag, both the opening and closing tags there. And now that'll be slightly different so that the 102 doesn't look like a button anymore. So we remove the tag.
All right, everyone, so we've been spending time today to create these screens to show more content, obviously, than we'd want to fill in the details of, of these screens, right? We'll, we'll get to that eventually. Um, so these screens, and also the, the um, we spent the time to create this art calendar. And then we've got this dialog box, which again is skeletal, but it's popping up. We're going to add some pictures, we're going to add some text, and so forth. And then we still got other things to do. So the big idea was again to create these sections for uh, for our project. And um, it was just a matter of of creating literally sections in our project adding the section tag with a data role and then an ID so that was sort of reiterating things that we've seen before but doing it again more concretely and yes if you invest in the Kodika software you'd be able to do a lot of this without editing the code you'll be able to link it and make those panels and everything but we used Kodika enough to create the basic skeleton, which was good enough because then we could look at the code, understand it, reverse engineer it, and write it uh, however we needed it. So at this point, I think uh, we've covered what I wanted to cover for today, which is to make these sections. What you could do as we wrap up the main lecture, um, eventually we'll start to fill in this content. You could put something there if you'd like. When we come back, what we're going to do then is start to work on, it might already be time to start to look at the, the, the map feature of the project. We're going to have a map, remember? We're going to have the ability to, uh, for, the, for the project to check the GPS coordinates of your device and then give you a map from wherever you're at to wherever you tell it. And that is going to require JavaScript. I have to double check my calendar to see how we're doing. That might be the next thing we talk about next time or a couple of other things. 
we've also I've also been getting the question, which of course we'll answer. How do how do we customize it? How do we change these colors? This gray color is boring, and these blue color this blue color for the nav bar is not the right blue. We'll talk about that, of course. Um, we'll see how the calendar is, and uh, we'll wrap it up in right now, basically, and we'll have some lab time. When we come back, we'll keep working. So, any general questions on things we've talked about? So I'm going to put my code in the network folder up to this point. You can have it if you'd like, and we'll have some lab time as usual, and I can help you individually.